Hello, this is Professor Steve Potter. It's a lovely day outside, but it is freezing cold. So I brought my portable CNC machine into my invention studio here. I have another couple of videos where I describe this CNC machine that I built. It's mostly printed CNC by V1 Engineering. Here's a lot of details and you can look at those videos if you want more of them. The main important difference here is that I made it portable with these swivel wheels that allow it to be hauled upstairs and through narrow doorways and to load it in and out of my car. I want to show you my portable pendant project. So I made this pendant to control the CNC machine wirelessly. I thought this was a prototype, but I'm starting to really like the uh, fat balls bucket lid form factor. This was perhaps inspired by this pendant for controlling a robotic arm at the Monaghan Institute. Here are some other pendants that inspired various aspects of my design. You may be asking yourself, why make another CNC pendant from scratch when you can buy them? The answer for me anyway is ESP Now. It is a wireless protocol from Espressif that has a lot of nice features, which I've written here and you can pause if you care about the details. But the most important things are that it connects instantly and that it has a very low overhead. Uh, unlike Wi-Fi, which has to do a lot of handshaking, um, it's very power efficient as well. And um, it works on all of their ESP32 boards and it doesn't need a router. So although Espressif intended ESP now for the Internet of Things, I'm not using the Internet, I'm just using the peer-to-peer -peer mode. I have an ESP32 independent talking to another one in the controller. There are a lot of touchscreen controllers for CNC machines, uh, like there are for 3D printers, but I much prefer knobs and buttons, perhaps because I grew up on old oscilloscopes with lots of knobs on them. I chose a car based on how many knobs it has <laughs> on the dashboard. And my RC plane transmitter is covered with knobs and switches. You use the LCD to set and configure things, so they have their place. But I think for controlling something in real time, knobs and buttons are much better. You usually don't need to use your eyes if you know your way around the interface with your fingers. Now I'll describe and demonstrate all of the functions that I've included in my CNC pendant. So I have all sorts of controls here to control this thing remotely, including a rotary optical encoder, a joystick, and incremental buttons to move it by steps. I have a speed selector to judge how much movement the rotary optical encoder causes. And I have various buttons that you need to, um, to zero it. So let's do that right now. So I have Hall effect sensors here at my end stops and little magnets on the trucks and it knows when it's home when the magnets get close enough to switch the hall effect sensors okay let's home it Okay, now that it's homed, we can move it with the rotary optical encoder, for example. That's in the Y, and the X, and the Z. And I can turn up the speed. That was at 100X, and I'll do 500X. You go pretty fast. Okay, you can also move it around with a joystick. The movement is proportional to how much deflection there is. And it won't move unless you push the enable button here. Well, that's useful for moving the spindle to the middle of the workpiece if you want to center it in the workpiece. And then once you do that, 
you could say set the current coordinates to zero now all of a sudden these numbers read zero you can also use the probe to set the z value to zero okay let's move it away a little bit and let's do the z probe so first move it down a bit top speed just to get it close okay then we hit probe z long press there it goes done so it's now set the Z probe so that the surface is at zero. Let's see if it is. Okay, to my eyes that's touching yeah, to the piece of paper and it says 80 microns. Or you could just push this set current value to zero button. Okay, so now it's defined where it is as the origin. So the other movement mode is incremental steps. Right now I have it set to 10 millimeters per step. So to do that, you push one of the enable buttons here, and then you push one of these buttons here for either up, away, or right, depending on which axis you've enabled. So for example, I can move the Z uh, axis down in steps or up. I can move the x-axis away or closer and the y-axis away or closer. Okay, now when it's home we can park, put it in the park position. And we can put it in the go to zero zero position. Back to home. Love doing that. All right, let's move it down in Z a bit. So that was 500x in Z. Now we're at 30x. That's a good one for doing manual probing. Ten X. Three X. And one X is very slow. You can see the numbers changing here. But you can't really see it move. Well, you can a little bit. Okay, that's the Z axis. If we go in X, we go in steps. And let's do steps in Y. Come back. Joystick. This is about as precise as we can do the joystick. So it's not very good for precision, but speed, yes. to home. Okay, so let's look at the different speeds here. Here is 500x. 
very fast. 100x. Thirty X Ten X Three X and one X. Precise. Now I'll show you the components I used to make the pendant. Hit pause to look at the details here. Since I teach maker workshops, it's good to have a transparent enclosure and I can show people the parts inside here. This is powered by an ESP32. This is the um, LilyGo TTGO board with the little screen on it. And it has a lot of its inputs and outputs are being used by the screen. So to get more inputs and outputs, I am also using these two Adafruit Seesaw boards. They have a lot of digital and analog inputs and outputs to handle all the buttons and controls here. The thing is powered by a lithium ion cell, 18650 cell, and I have a little charging circuit here that I can plug a USB cable into it. I have a small speaker that I can use to play alerts and uh, sounds like for example if the battery is running down. There's also a big huge red LED that says change the LiPo uh, if, um, if the battery starts running down. So the nice thing about the ESP32 is it has this communication protocol called ESP Now. It uses the same frequencies as Wi-Fi, but it's not a Wi-Fi protocol. It doesn't have nearly as much handshaking as Wi-Fi or as Bluetooth, so it connects much faster within a, a few milliseconds. The bit rate for ESP now is it's 250 bytes per packet, and I measured the maximum round trip time of about five milliseconds for sending ESP now packets. So on this pendant, there's a lot going on, so I'm sending them about every 30 to 40 milliseconds. Inside the controller box, I have another ESP MCU, and it's connected to a Teensy board. So the Teensy 4.1, it's a very capable microcontroller, it has a lot of inputs and outputs, and those are um, connected to the CNC by way of this breakout board. Phil Barrett's breakout board. So you can see the Teensy is plugged into the breakout board there. Here's, here's a, a spare Teensy that I use for debugging purposes and it communicates to the computer via this Ethernet cable. It communicates to the receiver ESP32 with a serial connection, a UART. The Teensy 4.1 has this fairly powerful processor running at 600 megahertz. It's a IMXRT1062 Cortex M7 microprocessor. So it is many times faster than the usual Arduino Mega that people use to run Gerbil and control their CNC machines. I did all of the programming for the pendant and the receiver from scratch in C++. Starting out as an Arduino sketch in the Arduino IDE, but um, it, was, it had a lot of tabs and it was taking tens of minutes to compile, so I switched to platform I.O. and VS Code. Now it compiles in under 20 seconds and it's just a much better programming environment with a lot more functionality to it. So if you're still programming in the Arduino IDE, I highly recommend that you look at platform I.O. and VS Code. To actually run the G-code that drives the machine, I use I.O. Sender that was written by Terry Eo. So that's running on my laptop connected to the controller Teensy by Ethernet. And it's also good for monitoring jobs. The CNC firmware is called Gerbil HAL and that's a version of Gerbil that was uh, ported also by Terry to um, 
to make it more platform independent, hardware independent, so it works on a lot of different hardware, including Teensy and ESP32 and other types of microcontrollers. As you saw, the pendant works very well as it is, but with a big project like this, there's always room for improvement. I have a lot of things planned, such as an SD card reader so that I could run uh, jobs autonomously with the pendant without using a, a sender or a laptop. And I'm, I've got a LilyGo T Embed microcontroller on order, which has a slightly bigger screen and a nice dial on it. Uh, I'd like to add an amplifier for the speaker and a volume control. I'll have more menu settable items. I'd like to add the ability to adjust the feed rate and the spindle speed by turning the knob. And of course, at some point, I should make a CNC carved enclosure for this pendant. <laughs> and uh, eventually spruce up the code for distribution. Okay, I hope you got something out of that video. If you did, please thumb it up and uh, subscribe if you're interested in this kind of stuff. And if you have any questions or comments or suggestions, I'd love to see them in the comments below. Until the next video, bye-bye, 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 bye-bye.